Hello my lovelies, it's Susanna, and today I want to show you how to solve this problem. It was a question in an admission test for the University of Cambridge, so let's see if we can solve it. The following shape has two lines of reflectional symmetry. MNOP is a square of perimeter 40 centimeters. So MNOP is our square here and it has a perimeter of 40 centimeters. The vertices of rectangle RSTU lie on the edge of square MNOP. So we have this red rectangle in here and the vertices of this rectangle lie on the edge of the square. MR has length x centimeters. MR is this part here, so they tell us already that this is of length x. Okay, what is the largest possible value of x such that RSTU has area 20 square centimeters? So this rectangle in here should have an area of 20 square centimeters and we're looking for the largest possible value of x so that this is actually the case. We get some answers here so let's figure out which of these is the correct one. Uh, well, because of the symmetry, uh, we can use that if this is length x, then we have x here again. And we know something about our square. They told us that it has a perimeter of 40 centimeters. So how long is one side then of the square if all sides are of the same length and if I add them I get 40 then each side has to have a length of 10 so that I have 10, 20, 30, 40 in total for my perimeter and then I also know because it is a square that I have the length of 10 here as well. Okay, but then I can also say how long this part here is because if the entire side is of length 10 and this part here is my x, then this, what is left here, is just the entire side, the 10, minus the x part here. So from the entire side, I subtract this part here and then this is what is left. So this is 10 minus x and because of the symmetry, we have 10 minus x here as well. Okay, in the end, we want to find the length of x. And x is part of this triangle here and also part of this triangle here. So maybe we work with these triangles and the area of these triangles because we know the area of the rectangle. And actually we can also find the area of the square because we know the length of the sides of the square. Uh, yeah, so let's use the areas. How can I find the area of the rectangle? I mean, we know that it is 20, but let's write it down in an equation. So the area of the rectangle, I call it a r, is the area of the entire square, so that I call it a s for area square, but then I have to subtract these white triangles, so I call this a T for triangles. And now I have an equation here and I know some things about this equation. For example, the area of my rectangle is 20. So I can insert the 20 here already. The area of the square is 10 times 10, so that is 100. And the area of the triangles, well, I don't know them yet, but we've already seen that x is going to be a part of this. So we're going to have an equation here in terms of x. And we're going to be able to solve this equation for x then. But first of all, we have to find uh, an expression in x. So we 
are looking for our area of our triangles. So let's go to another page here and let's search for the area of the triangles. Okay, because of the symmetry, we have these two small triangles that are of the same size and these two larger triangles that are of the same size as well. So let's take two times the area of one of these small triangles. The formula for the area of a triangle is base times height over two. In my small triangle, this is a right triangle, so I have x times x for my base and height, so it's x times x, which equals x squared, plus the area of these larger triangles. I have two of them again, so it is 2 times, and then the formula again, base times height over 2, which is my base and what is my height here. I have a right triangle again. 10 minus x is the length of this part. Because of the symmetry, I have 10 minus x here as well. So base times height is 10 minus x times 10 minus x, which equals 10 minus x squared. So instead of this thing here, I'm going to square the 10 minus x part. Okay, let's simplify this a little bit. We multiply 2 by this fraction here, so we can cancel out the 2 and only x squared is left, plus same thing here, the 2 is cancelled out and only what we have in these parentheses and squared. This is what we have for the area of our triangles. See, there is x in here. So let's go back to our previous page where we had our equation and for the area of our triangles we're going to insert what we've just found. We just have to be careful there was a minus in front of my AT so I have to write everything in parentheses so my area is x squared plus this thing here. And now we have our equation in terms of x and the only thing that is left for us to do is to take this beautiful equation and solve it for x. Maybe we first get rid of these parentheses here. We have a minus in front of them so we have to apply this minus to each element in here. So we have the 20 on the left side, then the 100, and then we have minus x squared and minus and plus stays minus and then this thing here. Um, maybe we expand these parentheses. Now we have 10 minus x squared, which is 10 minus x times 10 minus x and we can multiply these two parentheses by multiplying each element of the first parentheses by each element of the second. So that we get 10 times 10 equals 100. 10 times negative x equals negative 10x. Negative x times 10 equals negative 10x and negative x times negative x equals plus x squared. Um, we can simplify these here because negative 10x minus 10x equals negative 20x. So instead of this thing I'm going to write negative 20x in here so that we have on the left side still the 20, here still the 100. The negative x squared, we didn't do anything with this. But now we have this minus in front of this expression. So we have to write down the minus and then what we found out, what this expression mean, we have to write this in parentheses again so that we have this minus in front of everything. But other than that, we just write down what we just found out. Okay, then let's get rid of these next parentheses 
And maybe we also take the 20 from the left side to the right side already by subtracting 20 on both sides of the equation so that this cancels out here and only 0 is left on the left side. 100 minus 20 equals 80 minus x squared. And then here we have to apply the minus to each element in here. So that we have minus 100 minus minus gives us a plus 20 x and minus plus stays minus x squared then. Okay, let's simplify the right side a little bit. Uh, we start with the x squared parts. We have negative x squared minus another x squared. So we have negative 2x squared here. And then the x part is only this one. So we have plus 20 x and then the numbers 80 minus 100 equals negative 20. Okay, so this is our equation now. It is a quadratic equation. We can solve it by using the quadratic formula, but before I want to apply the formula, I would like to get rid of this negative 2 here so that the numbers are a little bit smaller. So I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by negative 2 here and here. 0 over negative 2 equals 0. And here the negative 2 cancels out and only x squared is left. 20 over negative 2 equals negative 10. Don't forget the x. And negative 20 over negative 2 equals plus 10. Now, perfectly prepared for the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula looks as follows. We have negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. What is my a, what is my b, and what is my c here in our case? a is always the number in front of my x squared part. If we don't see a number, it is a 1, so my a is 1. b is always the number in front of my x, which is a negative 10 here. And c is the number that doesn't have any x. It is the 10. Let's insert everything into our formula. Minus b. b is negative 10, so we have the negative 10 here in parentheses, plus minus, what do we have in our square root? b squared. So we take our negative 10 and square this thing, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 10, and then over 2 times, and my a is still 1. Let's calculate this beautiful expression here to find our solutions. Minus minus gives us a plus 10 here. Then we have the plus minus, and what do we have in our square root? Negative 10 squared equals 100 minus 40. So 100 minus 40 gives us 60 in our square root, which I don't like because it is not a square number, so we have to keep it like this. And in the denominator, we have a 2. So we get two solutions. A first one with a plus, which gives us 10 plus the square root of the beautiful 60 and all of this over 2. And a second possible solution with our minus, where we have 10 minus the square root of 60 and all of this over 2. So two possible solutions, let's take them and let's go back to the very beginning. Here are our solutions for our x, but they ask us what is the largest possible value of x? Okay, so which of these is the larger one? We have 10 plus the square root of 60, so this is a positive number, this is a positive number, and we add them here. And here, 
we subtract two positive numbers. So this number in total is definitely going to be smaller than this number here. So this is our solution. The question is, which answer is this? Because it doesn't look like this yet. Um, but we can simplify this a little more. Because we have this plus in here, we can uh, separate this one big fraction into two separate fractions where we have 10 over 2 first, then the plus, and then the second part with the square root of 60 over 2. 10 over 2 equals 5. Okay, this looks a little bit like this. And what can we do here? We could write the 2 as a square root as well, so that we can uh, simplify these square roots better. So the 2 is the square root of 4. So instead of the 2, I'm going to write a square root of 4. And then I can write these two separate square roots as one big square root, where I have 60 over 4. And 60 over 4, if I calculate this, this is just 15. So I have 15 in my square root here. So instead of this expression, I can write the square root of 15 here. And that is answer F. If you liked my video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me a lot. I wish you a wonderful day and I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Take care.